I'm Kevin Lynch, um, this is Yarrata Station and I've been here for about 13 years. In the last 18 months or so I've sort of been full on into the GOAT program. Milton from the CMA he introduced us to a program so we work with that and seems to be working quite well. As you can see all the spear gates and that we use that all around the place and they just come into the dam for water and so we just sort of trap around the water and whatever's out in the open I just catch with the dogs. And, Put them, make a bit of a yard up, put them in the trailer and bring them back to here. And it's more so with the birds, effect with the mallee fowl on that, so they're damaged in the nests and so we, you know, like to get rid of them and, and that way we can still have the mallee fowl around and yeah, they just disappeared, you know, like there's a lot of, lot of land clearing and that's, that's what knocks them about quite well and all the goats seem to, um, you know, just browse on everything what the mallee fowl are browsing on, so we're trying to get rid of the goats and keep the mallee fowl. The goats, they tend to jump on the mounds and they knock all the eggs and that around and the mallee fowl don't want to go back near them and that's why we want to get them out of there so they're not jumping on and knocking the nests around. And... Starting in early 2000, I began a career of, of really conservation-based projects where I looked at threatened species right across Australia and worked with landholders and the community to put in management strategies that would help all of those threatened species. A lot of mallee fowl still exist on private land. And because they're on private land, that means that actually the private landholders are doing something right. These birds wouldn't be here if it weren't for good management by these people. So I've wanted to look at how they're managing their land, why the birds are still here, and if there are any aspects creeping up on these birds that we might not be aware of yet that could lead to future problems. Mallee fowl are fantastic birds. They are incredible. The male in August comes in, he digs a huge hole which he then proceeds to fill with debris from around the nest, so leaves, twigs, sticks, and creates a compost heap. And then when it's right, the hen comes in and starts to lay her clutch of eggs. Depending on the season for these birds, they vary how many eggs they lay. So in bad years, when perhaps there isn't enough rainfall, they have smaller clutches of eggs, maybe six. But in the really good years, they step up production and they might produce 20, even 30 eggs in a single season. So where we see the wheat belt, through New South Wales now was where Mallee were most productive, the most birds were seen in those sites. Now they're restricted to less productive areas such as Mallee woodland, so we don't see as many birds now either because they're not in places that were typically suited to them. My largest Mallee fowl part of the project is located around Mount Hope where I have about five landholders that have populations of birds on their land. I also have a small population near Rankin Springs that's very small and, and still dwindling. I have another population at Yalgogran which previously was one of the largest populations in New South Wales but that's now been reduced to only two perhaps three breeding pairs. Each of the sites has a different problem so the Mount Hope area has a lot of grazing with goats, whereas Yalgogran has foxes, and in the Rankin Springs area they have a problem with pigs coming in and digging ground and, and removing vegetation. The number of photos that we have of mallee fowl interacting with feral species at the mounds indicates that the primary disturbance factor is the goat, the primary predator is the fox. We have lots of photos of foxes coming in and foxes step up the number of visits per night when the chicks are hatching. My name's Jason Wishart and I work for the Invasive Animal CRC as a field research officer. Been interested in pest management for a long time. Uh, grew up on a farm. Also interested in, I guess, native wildlife and, and uh, their conservation and, and pest animals are one of Australia's 
biggest threats to the conservation of native species. So feral pigs impact the environment through a number of ways, but the key ones would be habitat degradation, so they'll turn over massive areas with their snout searching for grubs and food. And they'll also trample the bush uh, with their hard hooves, uh, cause erosion, things like that. They're predators as well of native species, so things like particularly the mallee which we're up here working on at the moment, um, they're a ground nesting bird. Um, and feral pigs will wander along through the bush, find a nest, dig up the eggs and consume them. So what we've done here at the Invasive Animal CRC is we're going to be trialling the hog hopper up in this area to see if that works. Designed specifically uh, to deliver bait to feral pigs uh, without impacting on, on non-target native species. The basic principles with pest management is to get as many people involved as possible. You want to broaden the, the target area because that will help slow reinvasion. Um, if you only target at one property and amongst a whole bunch of properties, you'll remove the pest from there and then it won't be very long until they're all back in there again. We knew that helicopters were used fairly regularly in Yathong to check mounds. So we decided to try it for ourselves. And now we've, we've covered over 100,000 hectares of Mallee. We have about 56 active mounds currently and an awful lot more mounds that are not active. But some of those non-active mounds will become active in the future. By flying the area, we've saved an enormous amount of money and time. We can do areas in a week that would take us 12 months with 10 volunteers walking. And it's safer because this is difficult to work in. The fencing in itself has had the most dramatic impact on reducing the grazing pressure for the mallee fowl. So I think the most important thing we've done in the last few years is start a program of actively helping people manage the feral goat population here. The goat population has skyrocketed in recent years from hundreds to thousands. What we've done initially was we put in 56 goat traps strategically across a band through Mount Hope to try and stop a southward progression of the, of the goats. That was then followed on by what I think is a really innovative process of fencing where we've now started fencing areas that contain active nesting mallee fowl with a fence that contains one-way gates. So the mallee fowl are inside the fence, there are goats inside, the goats leave to go to water through the, the one-way gates and then can't return to the mallee fowl. So eventually we empty the sites with the nesting mallee fowl of all the goats and therefore stop the competition between the two species because goats eat the same thing as the mallee fowl. Be more more of the landholders, you know, need to understand what mallee fowl they got there and you know, they understand what mallee fowl they got, what goats they got there, we'll get rid of the goats and the mallee fowl's gonna do a lot better and and everyone does a lot better when you can get rid of the goats, so you know. They're worth a dollar eighty five a kilo at the moment, so it's just it's not not too bad of money, so they're worth chasing anyway. It's probably in the last five years, I suppose, I've been running around chasing goats. and um, Yeah, it's, it's, it's helped my income a lot. Like, so I cut the broom bush here and, and now sort of, you know, the broom bush has backed off a little bit. So I've just been doing goats and that's sort of the only income I've got at the moment. So it's, yeah, it's, it's helped me a lot, so. I think the, the strange thing here is that a lot of people know that there are goats in the system. They recognise the goats are eating things, but some people haven't recognised that they were actually competing with their own sheep and cattle. But there are many more goats in here than there are domestic stock. So that in actual fact, their impact is much greater than any domestic stock have ever been. I have seen an enormous change in the structure of the vegetation since we've been reducing the impact of the goats. I used to walk through here and see shrubs eaten basically back to bare sticks. In the sites where I've been able to reduce the goat numbers, we've, we've seen the regrowth on all of the shrubs to levels we didn't think were possible. This isn't just about the mallee fowl itself now, this is about the vegetation right throughout Australia. 
The first thing is be aware of how much damage feral animals make. We often don't see them. They're, they're cryptic, they sit in the background, and we don't think much about them. They're just an opportunity for sport, mostly. But these animals are destroying the environment. Goats are eating it out, foxes are eating our mammals and birds, cats are just ravenous and taking lots of reptiles and birds out of the system. We need to be really aware of that and make sure we put in control measures for those animals and, and back the people that are trying to do the work. Too often we just don't get any help when we're trying to do what's best for the country. And often we can make it financially worthwhile. The harvesting of goats has been amazing for people here. It got them through the drought. It hadn't been for goats, many people would have had to walk off the land here. You know, early morning, late of an afternoon, you'll generally always see a mallee fowl. Um, but sometimes they go quiet, like when they're probably nesting season and things like that. They're important to everyone. Like I say, people just don't understand, or once you do understand them a little bit, once they're gone, they're gone, you know, like, there's, there's nothing once they're gone, so that's, that's why we need to keep them. Yeah, she's, she's all, all a battle in the bush, but you just got to keep battling along with it. Just keep getting rid of the goats, you'll get the mallee fowl under, underway. So. Yeah.